Shaq walks down the street. It's a street in Pittsburgh. He needs an audience. He needs a partner so bad. Then he meets Beanie. They love each other right away. They want a podcast. So they decide to call up Pete. Pete. And Blaster Girl's a package deal. So tentatively they begin their quest. They look around, around at what they have created so far. It is amazing they have changed the world for the better. If you're obsessed with Buster or you're stuck up to blue, she's ass. In all the family, the family when we listen, we will laugh so hard, we'll laugh so hard. Dave's of Thunder is taped before a live studio audience. Dave, 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 and Dave, 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 and Dave, 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 and Dave, and Dave, 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 David Feeney there. Welcome to episode whatever of Daves of Thunder. Let's get into it. Back from the beach, back in his home. David Feeney, how are you? What's that logo behind you? I'm already steamed. What is that logo? What do you mean you're steamed? What, are what you is it? About? That's, that's, what? that's how I set my table. It's one, it's one of the, uh, the new ways I'm setting my table here. As autumn 2020 lands upon us, I'll tell you about that in just a second. Oh, but I'm going to ask you one quick question. Is that all right with you? Donovan hit me to this job. You have another show? <laughs> As you know, I have another show. I did not know that you would have another show. Donovan, Donovan, by the way, sold you out. Donovan himself a show snips this week. And Donovan, you have my marker for this, sir. Uh, there is a, there is a, and you have a logo already. That's There's right. a logo to it? I would like to focus, if we could, for just a moment on this show, and then we can deal with uh, we can settle all other hash to your okay. heart's content. Is that all, all right? right? Fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Really, those shows are about this show and about you and I, really, because even though this show is special, you and I are more special, right? We're yeah, that's a blur, as Donovan calls it. You know, in Almost Famous, you know, they're uh, the, the See, I've seen the movie. Right. At some point. Yeah, we discussed it recently. Um at some point, they decide that their regular manager, whatever, their modus operandi, just, you know, it was fun, but it wasn't getting to the next level. No, it's Taylor. Income, yeah. income, inco- right. In comes Jimmy Fallon. Sure. An okay actor, but a great impressionist. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, he is there to take them to the next level metaphorically, and then they wind, fi- wind up physically in a plane that appears doomed. But either way, you know, there's there's a hand above mine. There's a hand above yours, David Feeney, weighing in now on Daves of Thunder. That's all I'll say about it. And no, it is not Gary or Donovan, although it would be awfully ironic if Lil D had a had a hand over either one of us. But either <laughs> But wait a minute. So you're you're hinting, well, you're hinting at I'm not sure what that has to do with the logo behind you, sir. What you're hinting at is there's someone pulling the strings. There's someone new pulling the strings, and the answer is yes, there is. It's a higher power, right? There's a someone higher that, power going on. There is someone pulling the strings. There's a godfather, someone in the, as you will. Someone in the dark shadow. Someday I'll tell you, I'll tell you that person's name. We won't but name I, this person now, the him or her. Could be. Could we won't be. Name who, but what does that have to do with the logo behind? By the way, what you're asking, when you're hinting about that is that that's why there may be some changes coming in. The future. They call it in the business a call to action. The call mm-hmm. to action was made seven days ago. We said to the BTLs and monkeys, after our pal, Birdbath Gary, took time out of his busy schedule to cobble together a JetBlue Letters special episode. All hooey and applesauce carved out, all unnecessary pap set aside for one hour just to focus on David Feeney's, one of his masterworks. I won't say it's the masterwork, but definitely it's in the first paragraph of your obituary. Um, in terms of achievements 
are the jet blue letters you wrote. We put that out a week ago. You can find it on YouTube. Daves of Thunder is how you do it. We asked something that seems simple. Share with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. Some of you did, but you know what? I don't like to play hardball, but maybe it's because it's back to school and maybe I maybe I heard the the school marm, you know, come down on Damashek one too many times, so it's now ingrained in my memory. But maybe I didn't say it strongly enough the first time. Not enough of you came up big when it counted. And not enough of you have shared it. And I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to say it for the last time. Love this. Get it out there or you get yourself out. Show yourself the door. What do you think? I think think that's great. This reminds me of Dalton firing people at the beginning of Roadhouse. No more free rides. I love this. I love this completely. Take the train. What does he say? Take the train. Yeah. Or you asshole, what am I supposed to do? What do you say? It's take great. the bus, Sammy. That's what take you say. Bu- take the bus, Sammy. I think this is great. Now, by the way, I think you're misrepresenting kind of the number of people who have shared. And people, people Some did. in Some voice did. Stentorian I... shared, but we want more. We want That's more right. people. We want this to go all over the country. I want more retweets. Is that what it's called? Relikes? I don't know. I don't know from this Twitter thing. But Gary, back me up. The, 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 the voice, the, the people loved it. People loved it. People shared it, but not enough. So much so that Gary also got a call from the boss. The boss came down here, didn't he? The boss, apparently, by the way, damn shit, ripped him a new one. Did you hear about this? Is this a, he tore ahead. Gary apart. What did he say? What did he call you? What words did he call you? He called you like like an apple bag or something. Yeah, you I kept calling him an apple bag. Hey, apple bag. Yeah, nickel and dime, I see. We're going to get this thing right. Or th- Go ahead, Gary. I, I will. Bag. I will say I didn't like uh, any of the names I was called or, or much of the language that was used, but the message was delivered loud and clear that uh, we need to have more people sharing this. And I'm I'm doing everything I can with my Twitter, but um, you know we need we need the fans out there to really get out there and and be the ones who are sharing this. You know, put your own personal love for the for the letters behind this, and and get your fellow you know your friends to to like it and share it themselves. Donovan, what about you, sir? Now here's the, here's the, here's I'm going to ask Donovan in a second. See, I have one microphone. It's this show. You guys have plenty of microphones. You're on Twitter. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. Whatever it is, you guys are on all. And and Donovan has his own show as well. But what happened? Donovan, are you, did you retweet? Did you retweet the letters? Not only did I retweet, I told anybody if I dare you not to laugh if you watch this this video. <laughs> I I really did. I I ended the whole entire Drink Water podcast talking about this video yeah. and how everybody needs to share. Everybody needs to watch it. It will put a smile on your face, guaranteed. Gary, is this true? It is true. That was both of our plug for the last uh, oh, the nice. last Isn't episode. That nice that's right. Last two episodes for me. Uh, we've we've been plugging the bejesus out of it, and I've been tweeting about it in every way I can think of. Uh, you know, just trying to frame it as just you know what happens when a professional comedy writer goes after a, a multinational corporation as multiple so not fake people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I get the first shot off. All right, get I get the, the first shot off. Big deal, I get the first shot off. Let me get it off. Let me get the first one off. So what? But the point I is, off. I can lead off with a double. The point is that uh, me and Donovan are trying, but we need we need the fans. We need their help. And Damashek, are you going on the end zone? Are you on your end zone podcast or whatever it's called? Are you going on that one? And you're talking about the show, talking about the penny letters. Yeah, it's actually called Extra Points, though. Thank you. Yes, with Sorry, Cousin extra Sal and, and Charlotte Wilder. But I'm glad you you brought that one up. We appreciate anybody giving I that care. one a shot. Yeah. But beyond that, I'd like to introduce, if I could, and for Look the viewers, again, you can subscribe on YouTube, Dave's of Thunder, or if you're an audio consumer, great too. You Warm can find it anywhere. There. You can wa- you can find it anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. By the time you're listening to this podcast, to this Daves of Thunder, I suspect you will see the ability to subscribe and download and send it to your friends again and comment and otherwise. Minus three is the name of the show. Damashek, Jeff Schwartz, two Jews talking about pro football. Makes all the sense in the world. Get in there, why don't you, friend? Did you plug? Did you plug that show? And by the way, congratulations on the show. I'm sure it's going to be. I'm congratulations on any venture you go down. Uh, it's going to be a big hit. I'm sure. Did you plug oh, sure. that show on 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 End Zone? I mean, Extra Points. Did you plug that on Extra Points? I did. Yeah, and did I you, also did you in, plug the Dan Penny letter? I in fact uh, did not just plug Dave's of Thunder, but specifically 
the Dan Penny Jet Blue letters. But to the matter at hand, Donovan, what do you think of the logo? What do you think of the logo there, everybody? I can't. I see. went on and on. And take in your, fact, take Sal, your put them take your put them off and let me. Sit. <laughs> Sal got a little miffed because look at that. That's a nice looking logo we got there. It's, it's, it's Corolla. It's Corolla in an old Giants hat. That's right. Something like that. Or I, I think it looks more like Tom Brady. Minus three. Anyway, that's the name of the new show. Why is it called minus three? Because um, the home team, it's assumed. Your when, house will be after Beth divorce you. That's <laughs> minus three people. <laughs> <laughs> Look how he set it up for himself. I try to give a sincere. That's just me. That's just me off the top. That's me. That I guarantee Donovan did not text that joke to me. I guarantee. True. <laughs> It was like, uh, yeah, it was like Pearl Washington throwing the alley oop and Cliff right. Robinson gra- grabbing it and dunking it in. We talked about the Big East last week, David Feeney, mm. and and since our conversation, we lost we lost more guys from it. We lost my favorite Pit Panther of the era, um, Demetrius Gore. Is well, that true? I, more than more than Lane? Oh, Char- I love J- Jerome Lane, but the thing that really signaled that Pitt as a relatively newcomer to the Big East, belonged was when they landed Charles Smith. That was their first really high-end he recruit. Was he was good. And he was great. And I, it's funny because I'd kind of forgotten um, the Steelers weren't good in the 80s, generally speaking. And I weirdly had kind of forgotten how much that era meant to me um, uh, of Pitt basketball. It really does stand as a, in a prolonged way. I don't mean one season captivated me. But for five or six years, we did not miss going to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. And by yeah. we, I mean old Mo Damashek and my old man in Pittsburgh. And it's it's just not to be too grim, but it really has – I'm nostalgic, and it's really kind of sad to me. My old man, is, as I've discussed here, is banged up right now in Pittsburgh. My friend Richie was one of the regulars who went with us to the ball games. He He's gone as of December – um and uh, another regular with all Pittsburgh sports events in in my brain is uh, my uncle Scott. Shout out to him as uh, as he deals with his own health stuff. Do yeah, I, have I, did I meet Uncle Scott? You would have met him at uh, at um, I think it was my first wedding. I think it was first one, wedding. It was definitely one of my, yeah. It was definitely. A I don't remember meeting friends. him there. I remember hanging. I remember dancing with Mo. I remember hanging out with Cindy's side, but I don't remember meeting Uncle Scott. I have an Uncle, uncle Scott. Scott I was, maybe Scott. I was too busy. I was too busy making love in the bathroom. Uncle, just grotesque, and I can I, I can assure you that Uncle Scott's wife, uh, Aunt Roberta, if she ever hears that that went on while she, you know, you know, thirty, forty feet from where she stood that uh, blessed sure. day, I don't know what she's going to do to you. Well, you think listen, she listens to the show, right? She'll find out tonight. You think your bride Jennifer's family is cross at me for my behavior at your wedding? Wait until right. Aunt Roberta gets a hold of you for what you did in that dirty toilet. On my okay. special day. I'm very now, sorry. I um well hold Spears. on. Can I ask a question? You're talking about Fitzgerald. For, how's your father doing? Can I ask that real quick? I was thinking about him. He's doing all right. He's uh yeah, he's uh we'll we'll see what uh, what shakes out with uh, you know what I did man, but what that? I did because um I was thinking about him and how much fun he's been on the show, how lovely he's been to me. And one of the great things about him is how much he, he loves his son. And I love you too. Big fan, by the way. Oh, well, isn't that nice? Thank you. Everything you've done. I, I haven't even heard my, done minus three yet. And I know it's going to be a big, another big, big smash for you. Um, but as far as your father, he loves his son, but he loves his wife the most. He'd open a vein for that lady if she wouldn't open it for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the thing I remembered was years ago in, in version one of the show, uh, I sang a duet with your mother. I sang to her totally clips of the heart. Mm-hmm. And we sang together and it was beautiful. It was magic. We made podcast history. Your father got sore. He got good and upset about it. And the next day, the next because time. Something, fun, cause there was something like, yeah, you didn't want to hear it. Oh, it's a funny bit. But then all of a sudden, at some point, it started to feel too real. You when, know? Her, when her hand went on my leg, that's when it became a problem for him. And so then he left a voicemail. I'm not sure how he got the number. I remember that because I don't right. give it out. I, or I would give him out fake numbers. I remember <laughs> Um, he, uh, he wanted, he left a voicemail for me and I had, I had Burbat's, uh, pull it. Gary, do you have that for me, sir? Before I can't wait. I can't wait to hear that. Do you have it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh boy. I can't wait to hear it. The thing is, it's funny. You and my old man have the Red Sox in common. I, you know, I I watched the Red Sox growing up with him and they were kind of my American league team, but he found his true kinder when you came into his life. And in fact, I don't want to spoil anything. 
anybody, he, we've been out and about and with other friends or whatever, people I barely know, if they have a Red Sox ball cap on, he will bend their ear. He will, he yeah, will, sure. uh, he will engage them. And I'll say, I think he wears that hat um, because, uh, because his name is Bob. I don't think he does it because he loves the Boston <laughs> Red Sox. Never mind that. Too late. The old man's going at the at this guy, and the next half hour or so, of that guy's life are, are going to be spent listening to tales about um, his Red Sox love. But that's what I have with your friend Tim. He and I traded um, some emails when we heard about Demetrius Gore's passing. So it's weird, uh, you know, strange bedfellow with him and Pitt. Tim. Tim has a unique uh, um, ability to one boycott best friends' weddings. Uh, which I won't get into now, but he has the other one. Of, <laughs> he can turn any conversation into about uh, Pitt Panther football or Pitt Panther basketball or Pittsburgh sports in general. And your father will do the same thing. He will turn calling me at, I think, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, mm-hmm. chastising me for hitting on his wife into something about sports, into something specifically about the Boston Red Sox. Play it. Feeney, Lee Damashak here, you son of a bitch. Red Sox are no Red Sox. <laughs> Where I come from, you don't go after another man's lady. If I never see you again, it'll be too soon. It's a brush off for you, see? Tell you who'd never do something like that. Ted Williams. Why? Because he was a hero. It was a game I was at, the first game I ever saw at Fenway Park. I was a kid of nine back in the year of 1946. My uncle took me to a game at Fenway Park, the beautiful green monster. Dave Boo Ferris was a starting pitcher for the Red Sox, a 20-game winner, top of the first inning. The Washington Senators, the lowly Washington Senators, came up with six runs off of Boo Ferris. Did they take him out? No. Manager left him in there, Joe McCarthy, left him in the ball game. And who comes? Who comes at the bottom half of the first inning losing six to nothing? None other than the great Ted Williams. What does he do with the bases loaded? Parks one into the right field stands. What's the score at the end of the first inning? Nine to six Red Sox. Then in the second inning, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Then in the second inning, you son of a bitch <laughs> is one of the great lines I've ever heard. I just love you son of a bitch. You don't go after another man's girl. He goes into a five minute st- tale about the first inning of a Senators Red Sox game. And then you think it's over. Then, and then in the second inning, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's, it's really... Uh, I could never ever write something like that. Like that's how that's how wonderful that was, and how real and, and honest that was. Great, it was great. I, I wish him well. Godspeed, old man. We really we miss you. I can assure you, uh, they're sitting around. Uh, well, they've been sitting around for the last six plus months, and uh, they have they promptly will download this one. I'm sure they're listening. Um, if it's uh, if this goes up at Wednesday at nine o three a m, they'll be listening by nine o seven. Do latest. they sleep in separate beds? <laughs> no. They don't. Okay. Why do your parents? I, not yet, but my parents are seventy. I like. I wonder. Like at a certain age, what I always heard is that once you get to be like seventy-five or eighty, it's the it's the separate beds. That and that's just what happened. Just makes it. My grandparents, may they rest in peace. They were in separate beds from from almost the jump from like fifty. There and they were they were heavy people, but they they slept in separate beds almost at fifty. Really? And, and they, talk it- about, they talk about how great it was. And I've talked about this in the past. I've sometimes feigned being sick for an extra couple of days and to sleep in the guest room. It's marvelous. I, we have talked about this, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. I love it. Beth thinks it's bad. She thinks it's a harbinger for bad things. If that, that once you're disconnected like that, that then it's going to start a bad snowball. I don't know what, but I love it too. And, um, our little, uh, the, the little ones now, like they move beds. I don't even understand the math when I wake, by the time I wake up, they like to sleep in, well, they're six and four now, and they like to sleep in the same room. And the one has a trundle bed and the other. So they sleep in each other's rooms all the time. But you never know the combo you're going to wake up to. Uh, legitimately, two nights ago, I woke up to um, to uh, li- the little boy in the bed next to me. His sister 
in his bed and then um and then Beth in her bed. It was I like well, how the hell did it even happen this way? But anyhow, yes, I I love sleeping alone. It's like the best rests I I get are in in a bed alone. And but, you still sleep nude? Of course. I I would never oh, it's something funny wife. about it with your Chiron kind of in the back with that screen. It looks like every 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 second you move, there's a gray shape behind you, almost as if there was a ghost behind you. It comes up every second. Gary, do you see that diamond? Do you see that? I, I do. It looks Look at that. Weird. It's like it's like JP's ghost is behind you, haunting you. Gravy. <laughs> hey, very quickly before we move on, I want to say uh, I, I like to do this. I don't know if I am uh, on top of this every single year, but oh. It's the time to get back to school. It's September now. A quick uh, inspirational list for everybody out there. I like a list. I love a list. Well, people don't like school. A lot of people don't. I don't. You know, it's weird. I don't even know what to say to the kids when they come to me um, and say, like, "Yeah, I don't love school." Like, "Yeah, I shouldn't like school." You're not a sucker. You know, like, uh, what what person likes going to school? What likes mm. uh, who who wants their head being filled with 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 the man's thoughts? I will. Uh, anyhow. The Here's man. a list of the man. That's right. Okay. All right. You're the man. I mean, listen, the, the, the man supersedes uh, my white, white male in America. You're the man. Go ahead. Here's a list of people who went on to succeed despite not, um, not, not getting a, uh, a high school diploma. Get they, her toasty, they, Gary. Get her toasty. Richard yeah. Branson, Nicole Kidman. Really? Re- yeah. Nicole Kidman, she dropped out at 17. Wow. Aretha Franklin. Joe Lewis? Quentin Tarantino dropped out at 15. Dropped out of high school, okay. Dropped out at, at, at high school. Beyond that, and then we know a lot of NBA guys, you know, they didn't, they made it a year or so um, in college. LeBron James, Michael Jordan made it three, as a matter of fact, so on and so forth. And then there's, um, and then there's Steve Jobs. Didn't get a didn't get a college degree. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, mm-hmm. and Julian Assange. So there you have it. You can Hold be on. A- Zuckerberg didn't get a college degree. No, he came up with the with the Facebook at Harvard, and I guess he, he you know, was like, what, what 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 do I have left to achieve here? And he, la- I didn't know that. Is that in the movie? I yes. don't recall. I, I I don't recall that at all for the movie. I think that I think it kind of like left in the past. Him still being in Harvard, then he came out. Oh, you know, it, it kind of hinted at they didn't go back to Harvard. I guess that makes sense. He stayed in Silicon Valley. Gary is our, our resident social network expert. Go ahead. Yeah, that's in the film. He doesn't go back to Harvard. He- I don't understand. If you're Nicole Kidman, yes, you think like, all right, I'm I'm going to be an actor, and she's awesome. She mo- I think she was a model as well. Probably right? sound like Aretha Franklin is this immense talent in right. in her teen years it makes sense that somebody could convince her you know her and her um her parents that hey listen we got to get her in the recording studio yesterday and get her right. down and on vibe but what happens with like quentin tarantino you drop out at 15 how do you get away with that in society he's one in a million people like he worked at that remember that the whole t- story about him he worked at that video store for years and years and years crafting screenplays until he finally sold a bunch and there you go but he was, he's like the one in a billion shot. Like that doesn't work out well. Those stories don't end well. Yeah. I can, I see, I can see you did you leave on a list scholarship. I can, I can imagine you are being offered a list scholarship at IU. <laughs> uh, now you, you, ta- you love school. So, but all right. So we don't need to. I did like, so I didn't like college. I liked everything up to I really didn't like high school either. I liked the idea of school. I liked going to learn. And that was cool. I just was bullied so much in high school and college. I didn't talk to anybody. Well, we heard you didn't go to one party. It was terrible. If, I mean, the girls picked on me too much. I made, I, you know, I, I said at the top of the show that you need to go listen to the special Daves of Thunder. I happen to think that last week's episode with you at your fancy beach house. Was oh, a, that was fun. was that also was fun. a great episode. Yes, yeah, it, was, yeah. it, was a, it was a fantastic episode. And your little girl, in fact, made a, a cameo in that one. Um, but yeah, you told a heartbreaking tale uh, from, from uh, middle school. Everybody has to go back and listen to that. Yeah, it, the fact that that I, I, I that poor that she had a party and I was so excited to go, and then she told me that it was it was I was like one of four boys to be invited to this dance party, but I was so nervous. My mother took me to see Footloose, and then I then after I saw Footloose, I'm ready to go to this party. She's like, just you know, no boys are coming. I'm like, oh, okay, no boys are coming. But what a great chick, what a great girl to call me and let me know that I found out on Monday that the other boys did go. She just didn't want me to go. 
And in the meantime, uh, you and your mom had been practicing rock and the, roll dancing. We had been pro- practicing the Chris, the Chris Penn dance in, in, in Footloose. It was terrible. I saw her oh, year so late. I, I saw her years later in San Francisco. I told you. Oh yeah, you were going to pay that story off. In fact, today. Uh, that was real quick. But we, if people want to hear that story, Donna, do you want to even want to hear that story? I need some sort of payoff because I I can't stop thinking about that story. Don't, don't show your face at all, Donovan. What's going on? Where are you? My Look at that not face. Working. Look at that button. It's not working. Um, how Donovan? Donovan, can I ask a question? How's the house coming along, Donovan? It's going well. We just moved in, so we are sleeping there. We're getting all the boxes unpacked, and it's it's a lot. It's a lot more than I anticipated. But and a, uh, is the rumor true that you had a party? I uh, didn't have a party, but our our friends, our best friends, live about five or six houses down. So oh, is that why can... you picked the? Is that why you picked that neighborhood? That w- that was a a reason. Because, yeah, that was one of the reasons. That never works out well. That never Uh-oh. works out well. Trust Uh-oh. me, that's going to be trouble down the line. You wouldn't like to live on my block? Me, yeah, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> I can't. I can't get. I can't. I couldn't. Not only could I get there. First of all, I don't want. I don't want to live near around movie stars and, and Dodgers. Mm-hmm. And also the idea of going through that gate every way, going through uh, what's the name of Ivan's 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 gate every day. It's just the lifestyle. We don't we we no Gentiles allowed. That's not a it's not something a knock on you. I've never heard of that. I ne- I've never heard of a restricted <laughs> the other way <laughs> a neighborhood like that. Well, good for you. Progre- it's the um, ultimate and progressive LA living, right? You know what I was thinking about. You know when I was, we were at the beach, Damashek, uh Donovan, stay on. Uh, was that uh, the house? <laughs> the house that we were staying at didn't have uh, didn't have this. Uh, the house we were in didn't have this, but the house next to it had a nickname. It was something like Anchor or the Anchor or something like that. It was the nickname? Well, like they that. nicknamed their house. They named their house. I think Donovan needs a name for his house. What I do you think about that? Boat, but all right. People name their houses. My p- favorite story about that of all time is that um, the favorite name for a house uh, was uh, Ulysses S. Grant. He named his house Hard Scrabble. Wow! I, I think that is the greatest name for a house of all time. You need to come up with a name for Donovan's house and name that Donovan's house competition. I don't care what we what it is. Donovan, you know, give me some ideas real quick. Top of your head. Uh, scramble two. Okay. Why don't you guys come over? Know, it's, it's better if it's one name, but I get yeah. it. Why don't you guys? Well, I mean, I how's that sound? Hey, why don't you come over to the scramble? So cool. That is such a good name. Why don't you come over? I mean, why don't you come over to the scramble too? That's a little. That's a little. That's a little strange. It sounds yeah. like some sort of menage a trois. You're right. You're you are right. you. <laughs> You are famously known as Lil Donovan. What about if the house is called Heavy D? Come on, come on over. again. That sounds also, a little strange. Come yeah. on, you want to come over to Heavy D? That's a little. It's a little weird. Yeah. Drop I mean, by Heavy D. Well, I want to go back too very quickly. Well, why don't we use it in a sentence? Hey, uh, why don't you come over? Why don't you come over and have a drink at Heavy D? To, oh, to the uh, Heavy D. To the Heavy uh, D. Right. Jen just left me, so now I'm living alone at Heavy D. <laughs> it doesn't sound. Doesn't sound so good. <laughs> Oh, he don't like those. He don't like those jokes, Damashek. <laughs> well, uh, we, need, we need to come up with Damashek. If you and I had a house, what would it be called, Damashek? Well, apparently the dream's not going to come true since you don't believe in living in the same neighborhood, but I think it would be plumb no, swell. If, if we rented that, we, we always had that dream about renting, about owning, uh, co-owning um, uh, a beach house. We Like a, a beach house, you and I living on the beach, you, uh, you and I naming a house. What would it be called? Count me in for that. Um, the 66, you would, you, would, you would be heavy. Donna, you can go. Uh, it'd be the I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't, let's not Pittsburgh overthink it. Heavy, right? Well, if it's if it's you and me in there, let's not overthink it. Let's just go with Thunderdome. Thunderdome <laughs> makes sense, right? Thunder Lips would be a good one. I like all these, and we should come up with that idea too. But I really, I want to want to name Donovan's house. <laughs> all right, name, yeah, then we can name his firstborn. The oh, I mean, here we go. His his actual last name, little known fact, is Mac is uh, is Laxamana, Laxapada, or just call it Laxamana. Why don't you come over to Laxamana? That's pretty great. I like that too. All right, I think this is pretty good. The um, <laughs> yes, Gary. On Drinkwater, we refer to uh, his office as the Laxi Pad. The Laxi Pad. Why don't you come over to the Laxi Pad? The Laxi Pad. Just saying. Uh. Oh my God! That's see that no, he's his uh, soon to be betrothed is going to be under that roof, and one day their child, their their love child, will will walk those hallways. We can't have that. That's too filthy. Please. So back in two thousand eight, two thousand seven, I was in San Francisco, mm. and I was there visiting my father. My father was there for a convention when he was still working, and I was like, oh, I'll drive up for the night and I'll go. I'll hang out with my father for a couple of days in San Francisco. So I drove up there, 
And my father then got the plane and I'm about to check out of the Mark Hopkins Hotel. What a great, great hotel that is in San Francisco. If you're going to stay in San Francisco, stay at the Mark Hopkins Hotel. Um, and then uh, I get a call from back when we were speaking from your old pal, Tim. Mm. And Tim says, just so you know, uh, have you left yet? I said, no, I haven't left yet. You know, Julie so-and-so, the girl from growing up, the girl who threw the party and you were not invited and you were invited and he, she took away the invite. Yeah, she lives in San Francisco. Really? She lives in San Francisco. And he did some more research. She lives in San Francisco and she's a musician and she's performing the next night at a coffee house near the sea. And so I'm like, all right, fine. So I called in, I called in sick to work. This is, this is kismet, right? I got to stay. So I stayed the extra night to go see her perform at this coffee house. This one, the woman scorned you. What was the plan? Did you like, were you going to just make your way um, backlit? just doing your best dance, doing your best Kevin Bacon and Footloose, approaching her. And then um, as you get closer, she realizes, wait a minute, is that, it can't be. Wow. Why? I, to her own song. That would the be. Pl- the plan was to find her address and rob her apartment while she was gone. I see. But that didn't happen. Uh, the plan was I was going to go there. And of, of course I was going to romance her. That, that, that would be the, that would be the perfect story. I would go there. And also, in my head, because I'm ridiculous, I thought, oh, you know what's going to happen? I'm probably going to walk into this, this cool Hepcat uh, coffee house where everything's dark and people, instead of clap, they snap. How cool that? Like, it's going to be this. <laughs> and I'm going to walk in and she's going to be playing this song that, you know, and the lyric ends with Feeny or it rhymes with, you know, Feeny Martini. It's going to be some sort of cool, like, cool beatnik song. It's going to be, it's gonna be boy about me. boy I pushed away. Something right. like that. And his name was David, whatever it would be. Donovan will sing something like this. And then she'll take, she'll, she'll put the, she'll put the guitar over her shoulder, like a backpack and she'll come over and we'll kiss on the floor. That'd be a seeing me from across the thing. <laughs> but of course that doesn't happen. Of course I walk into this joint and it is like, not this cool, cool coffee house. It's like a Starbucks ish. Everything's brightly, brightly lit. She's playing in this corner. No one's listening to her. Dishes are falling. It was that kind of. It was that kind of scene. And I see her, and I'm waiting there, and she's kind of looking at me like this, like like what the who's this guy? And I'm sitting down. I'm ordering an overpriced coffee until finally in between. Literally the, the only, literally the only person paying her any mind. That's kind of right. And so in between sets, I go over and say, I don't know if you've met me. Uh, remember me? My name is David Feeney, and blah blah blah. We went to school together. Blah blah blah. No idea who I was. <laughs> absolutely no idea who i was no memory of me at all i forgot that this was the end of the story <laughs> i was embarrassed so then i say come on david fee david I, blah, 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 blah. I went to david's phil and blah 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 elementary school middle school and blah 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 and she's like oh yeah yeah right yeah she's like you had a great mom right and i was like yeah, oh, yeah, I, I have a great mom. She was like, yeah, yeah. She made a lot of cakes, right? And I was like, well, yeah, she would make cakes for my birthday. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, my boyfriend's on his way. Like, she was, she was freaked out by me. She had to mention the boyfriend right away. Oh, my like, God. Like, All right, so great. She was like, okay, I got to go back to play. But again, my boyfriend's going to be here any minute. All right, good for you. And so then she starts playing again. I sit down. I order another coffee egg on my face and then i just got up and left after about five more minutes and drove home that night oh got in at four in the morning got in at four in the morning talking to tim the entire way how embarrassed i was humiliated i was that is he got me again she got me again that's exactly right and you had it over her that she rejected you from her party you were the one who were left out and then ironically you're the only person who heeded her invite to come and watch her play. Right. And she still got over on right. you. Everything so. was aligned for this to work out in your favor. I, I'm telling you, terrible. this is a great life lesson Why? that I've learned myself. You think that it's like in a movie that uh, when I go back to the reunion and they get a load of me, oh, they're going to realize what a mistake. Oh, they should have, they should have paid me more mind when they had a chance. And I, it's the exact same dynamic as what it was when you were 16. It does not change at all. The cool kids are still cooler than you. They still look out of the side of their cool eyes at you and yeah. condescend to you. And they don't give a good goddamn about what you've done with very few exceptions. Is that right? 
Uh, I would think that's probably true. Um, I was really uh, that you didn't make love on this woman. That's right. Is is upsetting to me that she? I thought that again. She did with you. My dream was that she would see me in the middle of that coffee house and like we'd embrace, and then she'd be like, "Hey, what are you doing afterwards? I get we have a party. This is like a Thursday. You know, like, I have a party a Knob Hill, like to go there, and I would be partying until five in the morning with these cool San Francisco people, these guys and these chicks." We listen to music. Maybe someone would pass pass a tit to bet. Like around, Don Draper, like Don gauge. Draper in season one when he was dating the hippie girl. That That's was right. the scene that you thought you'd be there, kind of the handsome outsider. The the hippies don't know how to take him, but at the that. end they're going to leave, and you're going to stay behind with the lady of the house. It wouldn't even be about that. Your it, way. Right. it would be just about the experience of like, oh, she's going to show me her San Francisco. It's a San Francisco I would never see, and it never would have happened unless Tim called me. And it would, would, I don't know, it would have been ended up on a, you know, a, you know, a, a junk to, to Japan or to China. I didn't know how it would have ended, but unfortunately it didn't work out that way. I was 10 years old again. You talk about a time machine, old friend. It was, that night was a time machine from 33 to 10. And it was, it was as stark reality as it was in 1980 or whatever. I, it's so true. And I'll tell you, not to, uh, you know, I know that you call into question my, um, my resume, but it was it oh, sure. gave me it gave me great pleasure. I was once at a Steelers tailgate party um, in the early aughts, and somebody came up to me. I was writing at that point on the Kimmel Show, and not that that would have given me any pathway to you know develop a feature for anybody. But it's impressive, though. It's impressive. Mine or anyone else's, but you know, people three thousand miles away they figure like, oh, he's in show business. He must be. He's the ticket. And two jerks. It. Two grade A high school douchebags came up to me like, hey, what's up, uh, Dan Mishek? What's up? How you doing? I hear you're uh, whatever. Hey, um, you know, we uh, we just finished up a screenplay. You think there's any chance you might be able to get it into um, into Jimmy Kimmel's hands there and maybe give it a look for us? And I, I, I and sincerely, my answer was a very flat. Nope. <laughs> That was satisfying. You that didn't be as you didn't be it. You just said nope, and that was it. You didn't say like, oh, I can't. They're douchebags do who were mean to me. What was I going to say to them? I didn't. I didn't have to. I didn't have to add in the well. Now look, what goes around comes around. Nor did I have to include the reality that like, well, because I'm a writer on a late night show doesn't mean that I have any ability to help you with a with a feature. I don't know what you think I would be able to do for you here. I left all that out. Just gave them a nope. That's they better. You didn't jerk him. The, no, then I moved on to the ball game. Like, hey, what do you think about the Steelers today? Kind of thing. No, nope. you didn't jerk. You didn't jerk him around like uh, I did when you gave me your Raymond spec. <laughs> I stand by it. I'm not going to apologize. Uh, I gave it to Columbia. I don't know. Damn it! I gave it to Sony. Uh, Sony don't you has see? it. So, Sony has it. Don't you see? No, I'm you're, teasing. I'm you're teasing. Peter Rose banging out your 4,100 hits over 20 years or whatever. I'm Roy Hobbs. I made the scene. I stroked it into the lights, and then I quit. That's it. What else do I have to prove? <laughs> Does he quit at the end of the show? He doesn't go back to next season? How do you know? Well, in the book, he dies. He doesn't. He strikes I out know, and dies. We're talking, about, we're talking about the movie. The movie, he didn't go. You don't think he played in the second season? No, he didn't even play in the World Series. Did he just send his, uh, his Knights teammates to? He uh, doesn't care. I'm going to, uh, to bring back back full circle. There's a reason why, you know, what, Roy, what number does Roy Hobbs wear? Nine. Why? Because of Ted why Williams. Because of Ted Williams. Is that true? That's exactly right. There's a documentary on Ted Williams and, and uh, your Robert Redford talks about it and talks about how uh, he did that because of Ted Williams. Is his favorite player. I wonder if there's some tie in too. He, well, one, he's lefty, but two, he's uh, the splendid splinter. And of course, uh, Wonder Boy comes from a tree that splinters after it gets struck by lightning. Or uh, by- and then, then the bat boy gives him his bat. What's that bat called? Um, it is uh, the Savoy Special. That's right. And I think that's the perfect nickname for, for uh, Donovan's house. Donovan's house. <laughs> yeah. the, Savoy, the Savoy Special. Why not? Where's, where's my parade for knowing the Savoy Special? That's go pretty good. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty go good. Pick, call, go pick me out a winner. Savoy, but that's fine. 
Go pick, pick me out a red. That's right. Pick How do you know? How do that you kid, know? And that, and, that, and that kid never goes to school, by the way. That kid's never in school in that movie. No, he's able. He's able they, they don't have uh, the lights generally available to him. That's the first night game that Hobbs and the New York Knights play the whole season. They're playing day games. How's that kid available to, to not be learned across in his T's, dot in his I's, his, uh, his three R's, read and write and arithmetic? Two more humiliating things from my past to share with you. And this oh. happened last week. So I'm at the beach and having a great time. And it was nice getting on the phone with you last week, though I don't remember that much of it because I was, I was loop-de-loop. I was, I, was, I was stung by the bee that was Rosé. But uh, so after we were done, we got that. My, everyone's on the beach. Everyone's still on the beach. Misogyn- not a, a misogynist in a bottle washing up on the shore. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> We're on, the, we're on the beach, and uh, everyone's on the blankets and everything. And we had a tent. I had, before we started spinning, I had a tent set up. So I got in the tent because it was, the sun was still coming down, and it was great. And I could hear my daughter playing and hear our friends playing and hear my wife uh, telling a story. is great. And I'm just thinking about that. And this is heaven. This is heaven. This is – and what it is is hubris because all of a sudden, a wave comes in the tent and washes everything out of the tent. My phone, the chargers, the book I was reading, everything was out of the tent. And I am soaked, and I'm sandy, and I'm pissed off, and I'm drunk. And everybody's like, oh, my God, my body. And then the house next to us, the anchor, whatever the name of that was called, that was a team of people who were on the beach, up higher on the beach, and they're in their chairs, and they're like, we saw that one coming. <laughs> you wet, huh? You got wet, huh? And they start razzing me as I'm trying to wring out this tent and get everything, everything out. <laughs> now, by the way, we saw that coming is the worst. I mean, how come you didn't say anything? And they were laughing at me. They were laughing at the fact that, they, I mean, can you believe that? You would have gone wild with that, right? Uh, <laughs> you would have you would have said something like thanks nope. helper huh? <laughs> you would have no nope. you would have said oh you would have said something like you would have said something like well i mean how, how come you couldn't say I mean, what i want to say how come you didn't say anything i mean say like you saw the waves coming up everybody else is having fun we yeah, saw good. that coming yeah <laughs> how old are these people they're in their, their uh, early 60s these these okay. are like old these are older people but for christ's sake say something but young right? enough that they could shout out to you right yeah. yes because i mean by the way they're playing frisbee later so they, they i mean they, they they're certainly they're certainly spry like say something say say okay just so you know you're gonna get wet soon and what it was was hubris what, what did the greeks say as soon as you experience hubris that's the pride comes before the fall baby and that's what happened to me they had a live action America's funniest bloopers playing out right in front of them. And then the second thing Jerks. that happened with well, the second thing that happened with that is so that house next to us. So then the next morning and I woke up fine and I'm showering. I, I, I got up. I did your thing. Did the settle any hang. I got up in the early, I got up at seven in the morning. I jumped right in the ocean. Ah. Jumped right in the ocean. And it, and it was, I don't know if you've ever called it this before, but it was medicinal. And I got out of the ocean and I go and I, but I'm covered in sand because I was, I had a boogie board and I was covered in sand. So I go in the wall, I go in the, uh, the shower to have a wash and I and I'm getting out of the shower and then there's a mirror on the south side I'm getting out from the, the west side on the south side of the of the bathroom is this mirror going into the house next door and one of the women there staring at me coming out of the shower through the mirror <laughs> does that have to be bad what That's is that a bad thing? I, I'm humiliated I'm humiliated I'm, I'm, I'm fat on, on on fish and wine and the fact that I just come out of the shower and it's not an, it's not a great sight. I'm not, I'm not bad looking, but for crying out loud. And then just this woman just stared at me through the window, uh, through the mirror, looking at me. In and the she, second and, half and of she, your and life. She, and she did not blush. In the second half of your life, I want you to take on sort of what most old, we've talked about that a great deal. It's a Uh-oh. move that I'll learn from my old man. I think you either have to be completely cavalier about it or maybe obnoxious with your nudity going forward here i think i think that'd be great why well i just think that i would like to think that your response to that woman spying on you is to do that like the captain morgan's pose at her like you know like (laughs) you know yes here i I am that's funny just here i am for you that's right doors unlocked that kind of thing that's it uh i I, I want that level of confidence from you fake it till uh, you make it that 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 would not be my way because really, I mean, yes, I was embarrassed uh, for whatever whatever what that's worth, but I'm also protected the fact that this does not belong to me. This belongs to Mrs. Queen. I see, I see. For yeah, her for sake, my, my love, my lady. She's everything. <laughs> it's not funny. I don't know why you're laughing. It's not funny. <laughs> I think it's beautiful, really. I want Donovan, by the way, at the Savoy Special. Write... I, I want this. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want Donovan 
to pen an original song that he imagined that David Feeney would like to have heard when he went into that San Francisco um, bar or whatever it was, coffee house, to hear this girl. What the song should have sounded like in David Feeney's head, in his fantasy, how that would have gone. Not like the, that idea. Not I the wanna... dark reality that played out that night. You know, oh, you've, been, you've been sitting on your ass too long. I want to, we're going to give some Donovan some homework. I want that. I want a song called the Savoy Special. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the same. About your, about your new house. About your new house. <laughs> I, want, I want that. And I want a haircut as well. It's looking shaggy, baby. Yeah, I it's, know. Looking sh- it's looking shaggy. How who are you to tell me? He's when got do the we, great stuff. Donovan's got the great stuff. Do we hear in the tonight. movie that it's do, do we hear in the movie that it's Bobby Savoy? How I have do you no know? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Although, although every time that kid talks, he looks like he should have a deeper voice than he does. Yes. It's right. a very it's a very high, pretty voice. He's husky. Yeah, he's a oh, husky okay. boy. Okay. And what I one thing that drives okay. me crazy in that movie, they go to the same shot twice of him laughing. Once in the montage, and then once later, it's the same shot of him laughing in the clubhouse. Like, really, there's no, there's no more B-roll of him. There's no outtakes of him laughing. You got to pick the same shot of him laughing. I don't know if the rules changed at some point in the second half of the of the 20th century, but I'm pretty sure that just because you provide the bat and maybe even forged it yourself from your own piece of wood. I don't think it allow uh, that the rules of baseball allow with all its unwritten rules and otherwise. I don't think you're allowed to to uh, to stand nine feet away from from home plate for the for the climactic at bat like Bobby Savoy does there. That's the weird the weird oh, shot. Is that, that, oh, just, back then they could sure the weird he's shot. At, he's just standing. Mean, he's like it's like that's hey great. hey Bobby. If I swing full, I might hit you with the bat, man. Why don't you? Get in the dugout. Bump. Back then, they would have photographers right there, too, and they did that in the movie. I like that. That's your question, not the, not the fact that uh, – by the way, I made this bat out of a, a tree struck by lightning, and we measured – all they do is measure it and weigh it. That's all they do. They don't x-ray it or nothing. They could, they could have magic balls inside it. It could be, it could be corked up the ass. True. No, no, one, no one at all worries about how, – I wonder how he was able to hit the cover off a of baseball. Maybe because there's something ridiculously uh, illegal in that bat. <laughs> An interesting question, see? Um, um, can I ask you a question? You can. You you can. Go ahead. First of all, how I don't think I don't think we've we've at all asked. How are you? There's pain in your eyes, and I want to know what the, what it's about. Are I'm we, fine. Are we, are we fighting again with Beth? <laughs> no, no. I really. This I, is, I, no, no. And this is between us. Okay, this stays here. That's right. Um, I uh, is it the, is it the liquor? I don't think I really. I think we've talked about this uh, at some point off the air. I don't really have very many arguments with Beth. I don't. She and I don't get cross. Is that? Would you ascribe that to a lack of passion? I, I would. Yeah, she's resigned to what she's going to. She can't change the man. She can't change the man. And uh, you know, like this is my life. All right, I got. I, I got two babies out of it. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Makes that. I think you need. I think you need. And, and and I think I've said this before. To call it fighting is wrong. It's never fighting. It's negotiating. So you, so your relationship is very much like Nick Cage and Cher. In, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, I mean, I would love for her to make me a steak. <laughs> she hasn't, she hasn't made me a steak in a long time. Uh, it, it gets, it gets nice and heated here, and I would have it no other way. I would have it no other way. Right, and, and what's great about being married, you can shout at each other, and then you, and then you put her on the kitchen was, table, and you make your love. Uh, that's happened, but it's never in front of the daughter. Never, we never fight in front of the daughter. We make sure all the windows are closed. Uh, but the good thing about this, and I'm not trying to antagonize you, but uh, marriage is for life. We feel, and that you know, you know, when you get a fight in that, <laughs> no one's leaving. No one's leaving. So because right. of that, it's like, oh, you can just you can just kind of get things off your chest, uh, I free, see. Of, so, free of repercussions, or as Belushi would say, ramp repercussions. So Beth uh, on the marriage uh, high wire is without a net and she senses that and says, I'm not even going to go out onto the wire tonight. You know, I could wind up like, uh, like Robin's family. And, uh, you know, then That's I don't right. know what, then I don't, then, <laughs> then our, then our, uh, our little boy ends up a sidekick to a ne'er do well superhero who's conflicted with his own emotions. You were telling me a story beforehand and we have other stuff to get to, cause we got to get to these, uh, there's a couple things I want to get to. Well, first like, you tell me a story about how you guys watch Willy Wonka. We did over the weekend, inspired a little bit. Donovan, by see how family. I lead him into his Willy Wonka panel? I don't have a Willy Wonka panel, but if you want to kibitz about it, we can a little bit. I was struck by the fact that, as you mentioned, and I, I think it's not hyperbole. I, I, I've, in fact, um, 
told some people about that because I think it's pretty striking. A, a, a cinephile like yourself declares that Gene Wilder uh-huh. in Willy Wonka is the single greatest acting performance you've no, ever no, no, seen, no, no. or your favorite, that. whatever. That's my that's my favorite. favorite. I mean, favorite. it's just like okay, the, the movie's better than movies that I that Let It Ride, but Let It Ride is one of my favorite movies. Like it just it just for some reason it just speak to me something that was great. It's it's my favorite performance. It is great and um, certainly worth watching. But I also think, by the way, I might be mistaken. Could you check on this, Gary? It just I, I think I just remembered. I think Gene Wilder's from Pittsburgh, PA. You're kidding me. Oh, Wouldn't wow. that be it? Oh, no, maybe I share a birthday with him. Or maybe it's both. Gene Kelly is from Pittsburgh, though. Singing in the uh, rain. In the, the daughter rain. and I what the daughter and I are watching Singing in the Rain, which I think I told you about. And she's obsessed with it. She has the Singing in the Rain memorized. Gene um, Wilder. Uh, it appears Gene Wilder is from Milwaukee and was born. Oh, uh, I did know he was from Milwaukee. I'm sorry. I did. I did know that now that I hear that. I'm getting my. Uh, the Pittsburgh thing. of Wisconsin. It looks like he was born June 11th. That's that's that, that's his that's his birthday. Yeah, Same we, year? we share a birthday, not a hometown. By the way, though, the thing that a lot of people have commented on is Grandpa Joe. Well, obviously should be charged with uh, defrauding his family for years yeah. on end. He can one get of the worst, he's one of the worst characters of all time. Yeah. He's a terrible guy. Defra- a guy. Lays around, but more troubling. And the kids couldn't like, I have to go back. Even the older kids couldn't figure out like, so the four grandparents share that one bed. They all right. four sleep in that bed. No, I don't think there's any indication where the mom sleeps or where he sleeps. So there's another room. There's another room. There's another room. Charlie, Charlie over here is Grandpa Joe talking about it. Give him one after they find the fifth golden ticket that ends up being fake. You see Charlie in his room, and Grandpa Joe's like, "Give him one more sleep." By the way, Grandpa Joe is really banking on like, "Why would you do that to this poor kid? To to this kid needs hope. Like you ain't giving him hope, old man. It's like it's a a one in a trillion shot that the ticket's gonna land in his hands. What are you setting him up for? In That's the meantime, right. he's lazing about in this bed with the three other octogenarians for thirty years. For thirty years, and they do that. They do that like head to toe, toe to head yeah. kind of setup there. Who would you like to in your when you're eighty seven years old? Who do you hope shares the bed with you and Jennifer? It's the four of us. I forget Is Jennifer. It? It's the four of us in bed. Oh, oh, the four of us in bed living in Boulder. That's always been my dream. You, me. Donovan and Gary. Maybe not Donovan, but yeah, the other three of us, yeah. <laughs> he's at he's at, he's at he's at uh he's in Savoy special. <laughs> throw, throwing throwing whatever how many parties you throw in another party that I'm not invited to. Oh, I oh, assume the bad Donovan, party. Donovan, you're just like Julie, man. You don't invite me to parties. No, no, it wasn't a party. <laughs> you're worse than Julie because you come to me with a smile. <laughs> oh. They both play their music and shut you out. They forbid you to uh, <laughs> appear at their shows. Don, Don, get get ready for this, Feeney. I don't want you doing, uh, you know, once bit and twice shy. I hope you've learned your lesson with one rock star. I hope you not, no, don't go up in three to eight years or whatever up to Donovan at a bar and, and say, like, do you remember me? You're going to get the same act. You're going to get the same act you got from this broad. Ain't going to be in San Francisco, I'll tell you that. It's going to be in Diamond Bar. Chatsworth. No, I don't know. I, they, these are these are jokes for LA people. Um, I would say, uh, you know, I would I would gladly go. I, I'm dying. I've been I'm dying for an invite. Not only to Donovan's house, not only the Savoy Special for a drink. How about to one of his shows? I've been invited to, and also drink water. I've been invited to drink water yet. I mean, yeah, the the last should be first. I don't know what's the hold up there already, fellas. Yeah. Uh, you know, last week we I'm just talked, here to ask questions. But last I, I week we. Uh, um, Gary had some bad news for me before we started the show that uh, I asked him to um, find cha- chapter three of the Blaster Girl Mysteries written by our old friend, may he rest in peace, uh, Peter Fox, Jacuzzi Pete. And he was not able to crack the code. What gives, Gary? Yeah, you know, I've been, uh, I've been trying to trying more passwords. I, I, I've got the ones that we tried last week. I, so we do. So, so that's the very least. So we do not have a chapter to read this week. No, not yet. I'm, I'm still trying, but I have yet to be successful. 
And so to remind the audience, the, the, so Jesus there was a, had a thumb drive. Go ahead. Tell, tell everybody what happened. Right. So there was a thumb drive, and on it I found uh, a, a first, uh, first edition, first chapter, and then I was able to dig into the subfolders, and I found a second chapter. And then within that same folder where I found chapter two, I found a whole nother subset of subsequent chapters. But they're just folders. And every time I clicked on one, it said, this is encrypted, password required. So what, is, what was he doing? What was Peter doing? May arrested Peter. What was Peter doing in co- uh, password protecting all of these files? Damn it. It's very strange. I mean, yeah, he had what, what I admi- uh, what I admire about it. He had some pie in the sky, had pet pie in his belly too, but had pie in the sky ah. for the show that he, that, <laughs> nice um, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Playing scorekeeper. He's got he's got the he's got the book out. He'll put it down for a single. All right. That's nice. Nice place. Let's see if you let's see if you score. Um, <laughs> let's see who's behind you in a lineup. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so so we need basically to find the password. No, but you're we saying need- is that you'd be, be, the Pine Sky Dream of becoming a big a big celebrity, a big celebrity author. And by the way, the first two chapters were page turners. They were both really they were both really good. And we were both surprised. We were, I mean, I think everybody was surprised by. Uh, what it was it's like this, uh, this kind of this gritty 30s film you know uh, uh the feedback, Spade, Philip the, feedback the feedback has been remarkable for that people really do love this uh this novel the blaster girl mysteries the first two chapters at least go back and listen to those episodes what's weird about it is that it's called the blaster girl mysteries but blasters weren't around in the 30s so i don't know what the, i don't know what he's doing yeah. I'm excited. that's uh, part what of what's what, fascinating is that that's is that that uh buffet of a mind had so much uh, so much goodness and so much awfulness um buried what was away. that's exactly right gary what was the uh, um the word of the passwords we tried last week uh we tried password we tried bubbles we tried jacuzzi we tried nancy cindy chocolate <laughs> sh- <laughs> chocolate that's shake nice. french fries pizza chocolate pudding uh director Kimmel, JKL, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Uh, we tried a bunch of them, but we, none of them were really. But none of those worked. Case. We can do better than that. No, did no. you try? Uh, did you try the gout? <laughs> uh, uh, quarter pounder. Maybe we go off food. Uh, what were his favorite? Shex mix. What were his favorite teams? He was a Yankee guy. Try Yankees. Yankees. Oh, he loved uh, um, uh, Don Mattingly, Paul O'Neill. That's Thurman. it. Try Paul O'Neill. Thurman uh, Munson. Thurman Munson. Greg Nettles. Donovan, jump in, sir. Um, uh, He loves Star Wars. R2-D2. <laughs> C-3PO. Oh. Jabba. Try all Jabba. combos of that. Try Jabba the Hut. Maybe just the Hut. Ooh, while you're at it, try Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> all the Huts. All the Huts. Uh... All right, so try those and see. Try those and see. By the way, I want to uh, get to that. I want to. I want to. I want to get to chapter three. I mean, really, I'm very uh, excited to see what he has in store for us. Gary is um, is uh, a jack of all trades, but I guess solving these password thing, we need our version of Hans Gruber's guy. Um, and a question for you about Hans Gruber's um, guy, who who you know the guy who is in there in the Nakatomi Plaza solving. Which one? He had like 14 of them. But oh, the guy oh, at the, the, guy computer, with the, glass, the guy with the glasses. Yeah. Yeah. He is trying to solve that thing. He's like, he's, he's a, a preppy guy. He's got like his collar up and all that. How does, um, what's his name? Who drives the limo downstairs? Argyle. Down, Argyle is down there talking to girls and everything and listening to music. What do you suppose? There's no indication that he has any idea what's happening in the outside world or that he's sitting underneath this terrorist uh, hostage taking event above his head. What then what then flips a switch for him that makes him decide, you know what, I better drive this limo into that ambulance over there. No, because don't forget that he turns on the TV in the limo and he sees, he does? He, he sees the news report of what's going on. Right. Oh, I'm he not, does. I, say I, I forget what made him turn on the TV. I remember he's drinking and he's like pretending to toast to the big stuffed bear that McLean got for his wife. Uh, but as somebody makes him turn on the TV, then he sees Nakatomi Plaza uh, in Century City uh, is being uh, uh, the, the ter- seized by terrorists. That's, that's what oh, it was God. About. And then he, yeah, then he's very nervous throughout that. 
He I also to, like, he, I'm sorry. He tries to drive out of there and he can't because everything is sealed off. Right. There's a lot of, there are a lot of inconsistent um, uh, versions of unconsciousness mm. in that picture. Apparently Argyle, who is probably 123 pounds, punches him once that renders that guy out of the rest of the picture. Like he's yeah. a, he, he, <laughs> that's the end of him. He, he's, he, he's no trouble for anyone anymore because the 123 pound limo driver punched him once. And then, He's the also, other, by the way, can I can I make one observation? Not to interrupt, is that that's also the one terrorist that gets away. I'm mean, sorry, that doesn't get killed. Right, and the then, nerd is the one. Like, so what kind of time was he looking at? And his name was Theo, by the way. The, uh, yeah, it's Christmas Theo. It's a time for miracles. But so be of good cheer and call me. Uh, Theo is um, Theo for crying aloud. Theo does not die. So Theo, you you could imagine, you could assume probably lives. So Theo's still in jail, probably. Right, we're talking about dozens of people murdered. It was a heist for three hundred million dollars, right, or six hundred million dollars. Uh, a building was destroyed. Helicopter, FBI, Feds, Feds took the nap. Feds took the nap that night. So you would think that that Theo is still in prison, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a great point. It, I, I'd love to hear what go what where he goes. There's your sequel. How did they make seventeen Die Hard sequels and not bring back that guy? That's a great point. At one time, you were that pitching me his brother. You were trying to get into the movie business, I remember. You were pitching me the Argyle prequel to Die Hard. Remember it? <laughs> remember, remember that one? Sure. I do, yeah. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. And also about a hamster for some reason, just like the wreck, just like this, the Raymond spec. <laughs> Don't give it away. Go Don't ahead. you know how this business works? <laughs> you put it out there tomorrow, that movie's in production. We I don't know where that I interrupt you. What's your second point about Die Hard? I, I'd love to hear it. I don't know. No, no, no. It was a great. Okay, well, I'm sorry for interrupting. I, I had I had a couple of jokes. We'll talk about it later. I do want to get back to. Um, we'll do that on another episode too, Willy Wonka, because I have a lot of concerns about. I talk about spinoffs. What happened to all the other ones? What? what why didn't the kid, they spin, the kid. all the other kids? What? Yeah, wouldn't that died. be interesting to they hear? Died. They the kid died. Are we to believe that the kids are dead? No, of course not. He said, he goes, what about those other? He goes, don't worry. They'll be, they'll be fine, but they'll be a little bit wiser. So you have to, you have to assume that they're going to be fine. But to get to the, to, to finish your Grandpa Joe panel, uh, the, the fact that Grandpa Joe doesn't get out of bed for 30 years and then uh, Charlie gets the gold ticket. And what is the first thing Grandpa Joe says? I've got a gold ticket. I've got a gold ticket. He He's running for the hill. to that. He and does not even, I mean, listen. All right, Grandpa Joe, everybody in the room gets it, even Mom. But by the way, Mom's the one paying the bills. Yeah. She's the one on that on that washboard every day for hours yeah. on end and with the iron and everything else. Right. So isn't she the one? But okay, Grandpa Joe's like, listen, this kid needs something to look forward to. It's ludicrous that he pins all of this kid's uh, self-esteem on getting this golden ticket. Or, uh, But... Okay, everybody in the room gets it. None of the grand other grandparents so much as open their yaps to support the kids. So, of right. course, great. But th- don't you do the decent thing and at least say, "Oh, no, no not me. Let somebody else go." Like he doesn't even try that. But I want you, Grandpa Joe. I want you to come with me. And he immediately is like, "I got a golden ticket." Yeah, I, I think the the dance is ridiculous, but I fault Charlie for that. How dare? How dare Charlie ask Grandpa Joe? How dare he? Ask Grandpa Joe and not his mother. How That's dare right. he? The same thing is like, hey, Grandpa Joe, don't worry about it. I buy your tobacco now. now you, don't, you don't get mom a flower. You don't get mom some help around the house. A new mop. I don't know what she needs. Who is this Grandpa Joe? Movie. Who is he that he's such a compelling figure, to intimidating figure at that? But what I was going to say uh, about 48 minutes ago was the thing that struck the kids more than anything else in that scene was they were aware they're the, you know, for little kids, they picked up on like, why is grandpa Joe just assuming he gets to go? And he's like, right. now he can dance. They get all that. I, I appreciate that they pick up on all that. But the other thing is, that, that, that fascinated all, all uh, three of the kids that were watching was like, how do they go to the bathroom if they're in bed all the day? And I'm, I said, look, oh, you can see on. under the bed. I said, look, you can see under the bed. They have their, their chamber pots. Right. They were, fascinated by this the the sure. little boy especially like do you mean that they do like so if they do peepees like what do they like how do they get like he was acting out how you would get a a chamber pot next yeah, to your wiener into your bum and everything it is well, who, a, who, cl- the, 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 who cleans it well that's see it's that's just like the bucket daddy throws up in when he's when he's over <laughs> that's right that's right that's that that right. when, so when i say 
don't all write me that you're ready to wrap it up. I'm not ready to wrap it up. We got we got more stuff on the uh, we got more stuff on the outline, baby. We got we have more stuff. I do want to. I, I just do want to say though, before you say that you want you, me, and Gary at least sharing that bed. Do you really want to? Do you really want to make in the bed with me oh, sitting yeah. right next to you? We might actually be touching. I mean, if, if my legs aren't working, that's the least of my problems. I want to get it out. I, I, I think. I think if you're, sharing, to... if you're sharing a bed with me for 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 thirty years, I think I think humility has gone out the window. Well, you've got such uh, such humility that you. I think it's classy, really, but it it's owed to shame, not um, yeah. Try to, but you leave your hotel. You can be in a super fancy hotel with Jennifer. You go to the lobby because you're not going to make dirt with her in the in the yeah, lobby, or sometimes to the hotel next door. Which is pretty sad. <laughs> we talk about the Mark Hopkins Hotel. I've taken Mrs. Feeney there several times. Sometimes I got to go to the Fairmont next door. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> it's just the way it's just the way things are. It's just the way things are. Two more things about Willy Wonka, real quick. Uh, I hate the I hate the fact that um, so then Grandpa Joe out of bed for thirty years. They, they're in they're in Wonka World, right? They're in the Wonka the the, the house and uh, the factory. And as soon as Willy Wonka leaves for a second, Grandpa Joe says, "Let's let's uncork let's uncork this drink that we're not supposed to drink." Right? Come on, He's let's, the break, bad some, guy, let's right. break some rules, right? And then when they're going up, they hit the fan. He's like. Well, we cut the ribbons. Like he scared, he, he scares the hell out of this little boy. And then at the end, after all is good, not to ruin the movie, they're up in the elevator, and Willy Wonka's like, "I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this back to you." And then what is the first thing Grandpa Joe says? He, he goes, he goes. He, uh, Willy Wonka says to Charlie, "You can move in." And Grandpa Joe says, "And me?" Right. The first thing he right. says, "And me?" Like that's all he cares about is himself. He is a bad a guy. Garbage throughout and once he gets into the factory too he's super sort of morally inconsistent too he tells all those kids that they're bad kids he he mouths off to all the all the parents with everything he's real uh, she's sassy. a netwit he says that's right right yeah. it's it's crazy who are you who yeah. is this grandpa joe yeah he's he, he's bad he, he's really bad news um one more thing we have to get to and i'm yes. sorry is that we have to talk about uh, the really the, we're not that we didn't bury Lee. We're, I'm glad we 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 I think I think we, I think it's been a it's been a grand show a hell of a time. Uh, we got to get to these interns. Okay, we got to get to these interns. So Gary, tell me what's going on. Where we we, we decided an yes. And now, by the way, we want you and I wanted an intern. Now we've kind of we've been told we need to get an intern. Right by you know who, and this might say no more, but the. Um, I, I do think, do we need to consider like, is the show snitch, which you've called for? Yeah. Also the, in, is the intern, the snitch and the snitch is the intern. I think the end, I think we're going to pick one person and I think uh, whoever, uh, I mean, we can get to this, but whoever we pick as the intern will also be working for me as the show snitch. I That'll see. be one of this intern's uh, duties. And right now I think we talked, Gary uh, uh, tag in buddy. Yeah. Listen, when I got my talking to, um, you know, enough said there, but when I got my talking to, the word came down that DeWitt and Dan from Ohio, you know, they're just going to be folded in. They were going for show snitch, but they're they're unwittingly they're going for show intern because it's going to be a dual position. So last we heard, you know, they'd been dueling back and forth over email and voicemail, and I think the last word came from DeWitt. And okay. uh, we haven't heard much out of him since then, and admittedly that would that would make sense you had the last word but we did get a voicemail from dan from ohio so i think we should listen to that and then um after they both hear this maybe we give them a chance to both weigh in before next week and then uh, i don't know we'll have to we'll have to figure it out from there because what we're setting up is that probably we're going to come up with some sort of well let's hear let's hear the thing yeah the thing. here we go dan from ohio funny stuff to wit funny stuff if i wanted to laugh I'll watch according to Jim. If oh. I want to laugh, I'll watch Two Broke Girls. If I want to laugh, I don't open an email from DeWitt goddamn Ortega. I'm too young for this job. How about this one, DeWitt? You're too old. You hide behind your computer. You're not even spry enough to call in. You're low stamina. And now this lawyer is in the mix? Look, <laughs> if you have to say I'm hilarious, Within the first 10 seconds of introducing yourself, you're probably not hilarious. And where's this guy's priority? He's got a client facing the chair. The man is on death row. And instead <laughs> of penning a defense, he's standing, he's sending Damashek 
wax sealed letters. That's an outrage. <laughs> <laughs> Look, fellas, these other guys, they're in the twilight of their lives. They've got careers. They've got families. Well, I've got my whole life ahead of me, and I've got nothing. No meaning, no purpose. So I submit my future. I submit myself to you, the Daves. Mold me. Name a shape, and baby, I'll contort myself into your image. These mm. other clowns cannot commit to you like I can. Also, Feeney, if Shep goes into a five-minute bit on how to pronounce irony, be warned. He tried that one on the Sal podcast. Results were as expected. This is Dan from Ohio, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Dave Feeney, Bird Bass Gary, even Dave Damashek, big fan. DeWitt, hilarious lawyer, less cha-cha. I don't care for him. What can I say? I love. You know what though? I that like. I shows like his- Moxie. I agree. I agree. Uh, Gump- Gumption, Miss McGill. That's right, Tess McGill. Uh, I will say, uh, well done, well written, really well performed. I like the cut of this kid's jib. I like this Ortega too. Uh, what do you say? I think. I think. Let's say, and this is not just, this is this is us talking about this, but also uh, twisted my arm. Let's do it. Those, I think those two are our finalists. Next week we have them on the show. I was just going to say the the final stage is in person and or not, you know, is Zoom interviews. Right? We have them on. We have them, uh, and th- that that can be something we can talk about if we can beat them one on one first, as you would do any job, and then we can pit them against each other in some sort of contest, some sort of strength of will. Some sort of trivia thing. Gary, what do you suggest? Something like that? Yeah, I think that's great. I think we should um, have them both, uh, you know, email us, Dave's Thunder Podcast at gmail.com. And next week, we'll get them both on the show. We'll, we'll do it the way, exactly the way you guys suggested it, you know, one on one first. And then maybe as the show wraps up, that'll be how we uh, close it out a head to head competition of sorts. And we'll work out how to do that. This Ooh, is pretty I great. Like- Damn it, I want you playing ball. I want you playing ball. Wait, I'm I'm bad cop or good cop? No, we're both good cops. We're both. We're, I just want you playing ball. I don't want you like trying to make a bit out of it. This is serious business. Because you know what? Turn it into. I like this podcast. I don't want. I don't want to be fired off it. Life ain't a bit. I say it all the time, and I say it again to you now. And I don't like this character, but I, but I, but I like this character. If you know what I mean. So I'm looking I, forward I, to I, talking I to both of them. It's really, it's really good. Um, all right. I think that's it then, right? Let's hell of a uh, show. Hell of a time. Hell of a show. You think love so? Talking, love, right? talking, love talking. Love talking to you. Great times. Don, Donovan, what do you say? I, I thought that, that that was the best entry for the, the new snitch slash intern. So I'm excited about that and excited to hear from him next week. And I got I'm a song for you, Feeney, next week. Oh, oh, I so for, oh I look, at, look at Donovan. Oh, Donovan always comes alive at the 5830 mark. Always, <laughs> always at 5830 he comes in. Good for you. <laughs> Uh, um, great, great. That's awesome. I'm excited about tattoo. Oh, what a time we had. What a time we had. All right, let's spin. Um, all right. Hit the, uh, hit the Yub Nub song to signal everything is all right. Once again, I will talk to you on the other side of my little, uh, excursion, um, with the gang. We're heading up to, uh, to the beach. I haven't been to, I haven't, I haven't dipped my toes into the sea once this summer. I'm going to rectify that and how um, okay. over the next few days. And that's uh, great. When I return, if I return, then we will uh, we'll do the intern um, interviews, intern views, and we will. Why won't you return? What a, what a weird thing <laughs> if you return. I don't know. Uh, what do I know? O- if the ocean takes you up. If the sea decides to claim me, you know, that's it. I want you to know it's been a great ride. If that's yeah, what it's, it's been a great, it's been a great, it's been a thrill. Thank you very much. For if this is if this is it for me, is there anything you want to say? Uh, I say I love you, and uh, I like uh, I like having you in my life. Well, but I'm out of your life. You liked having me in your life. If that's it, if I, that's I, I like I like that. I was either things I'd be saying over your over your uh, over your casket. Do voices. I want everybody to show up. At, uh, yeah, who's, I want who's, mi- gonna, who's gonna top? Who's gonna top Richard Nixon being at your wedding? I, I don't know. That. Mrs. Garrett eulogizing me would be a thrill. I want the I whole. I want, I want everybody from Facts of Life. I have a Charlotte Ray in me. I have a Mindy Cohn in me. I have a Mindy Cohn in me. 
Can you do two? Shoot, shoot, I can't. Do, I can't do two. Two is a tough one. Joe. I can do Joe. Joe's okay. Blair is also tough. I do a great Clooney from the later years. Uh, but it's uh, these are all I almost, of life jokes. I almost want to die, but then I would miss it. So that's uh, that's the rub of it. <laughs> anyway, all right. Good stuff, Gary. Good stuff, Donovan. Good stuff, BTLs and monkeys. And remember, right. you want to do a better job. Go and listen. Go share it with everybody. The Daves of Thunder, the Jet Blue Letters by David Feeney. Get those out there. Um, and we'll kibitz with you in a week. And, uh, and for the great David Feeney, that's that. We'll talk to you in a week. It's been a thin slice of heaven.